cannot believe this has happened to me. I'm almost home. Snap my chain. Oh well. All right, what are you not doing here? You are. Show you how to fix it at the side of the road? Go on then, I'll show you. Now, despite that rather impressive acting of mine in the introduction there, I have actually deliberately broken this chain for the purpose of the video. The reason that some chains do break, I don't know, but it possibly could be due to age, a poorly timed gear shift when applying a lot of torque through the pedals, or sometimes just poor insulation to start with. But certainly chains these days don't tend to break as often as they did in the past. But today then, let's look how to solve it if that unfortunate incident happens to you at the side of the road. Now for this quick roadside repair, we're not going to worry about using any of those fancy little joining pins that you have to snap off because not everybody's multi-tool out there can actually snap off the remnant. So instead, we're going to use a pair of quick links to actually rejoin the chain. That way you're going to be able to keep the chain the same length and you're not going to have to faff around at all for too long whilst doing this running repair. Now these quick links are actually a really great idea for one reason in particular, because if you've got an 11 speed pair of quick links, you can repair any 11 speed chain out there. And the same could be said for nine or 10 speed, obviously, if you have it in that variant too. Meaning that if one of your buddies is out on a ride with you and they happen to snap their chain at the same time, well, you can just hand them over to them and let them get on with the process instead so that, well, you don't get your hands dirty. Now, sadly, due to the fact that I deliberately broke this chain for the video, I don't have a real world example of exactly what it may look like at the side of the road. But in essence, you want both ends of the chain to look like this. So by that, I mean, basically, you've got the inner pair of links on either end. Now, I don't have that in this case, so I'll show you just how to remove the other end so that it matches up with this one. So luckily I've got a handy Topic multi-tool with me on the ride, which is very fortunate, let's face it. Now, if you're very, very lucky as well, you could well end up with two ends of your chain broken and looking exactly like that. But I think the chance of that is extremely slim. If it's happened to you, let me know in the comments section down below. But yeah, I am going to remove this pin so I can rejoin it using the connecting links. Now, one of the reasons as well for using these connecting links is then you can get exactly the same chain length as before. So you can carry on riding and you're not going to be stuck without any gears. So uh, yeah, let's do that bit. You want to make sure that the pin of the chain tool is lined up perfectly with the rivet or the pin of the chain. And just do it up gently by hand until you are sure it's in the center and then slowly apply pressure onto the chain tool just to pop that pin or rivet out of the other side. You don't need to worry too much if the chain does come apart because, well, that's what you were trying to do, let's face it. And then both sides will end up looking the same. So in my case, I've got both inner links there and they're ready to be joined together with that quick link. So before you go ahead and fit that quick link, make sure that the chain is correctly rooted through everywhere. So by that, I mean really around the derailleur, pay particular attention there. You wouldn't be the first person to ride along with loads of noise from the rear end. So with that in mind, make sure, of course, the chain is going around the sprockets correctly and that it passes around this side of the upper pulley wheel before it goes on the underside. And then on virtually every rear derailleur cage out there, there is a small little bar or a rivet almost that goes through. That needs to go on top of that. So it goes around, underneath, on top, and it goes on the top side of the lower pulley wheel, like so. You don't want it to be dragging along underneath this uh, rivet there because that will make an awful lot of noise because there'll be some extra resistance there. And obviously make sure the chain is not twisted or going in any other direction at the front end either. Now, when it comes to rejoining that chain, we also want to make sure that the chain is not under too much tension. So make sure the chain is not on the big chain ring, it's not on the biggest sprocket at the rear, because then it's going to have the most amount of stretch going through it, making the job for you just a little bit tougher. So instead, possibly reach forward to the front and just drop it down like so. Therefore, you've got a lot more room to be able to play with. This is one of those occasions, really, where you wish you had three hands. In my case, I'm quite lucky because that little multi-tool from Toppy comes with this. It joins the chain together back temporarily or just kind of holds it in place, relieving you from having to do that job. It's almost like an extended paper clip. You could even fashion one of these at home if you liked. So it's just a case of using this handy little tool. I do like these, it must be said. And then getting that chain, it's joined like so, just so you've got 
a little bit of room to be able to play with. Trust me, it's way easier having this than trying to battle everything. It's an absolute nightmare, especially with a greasy, slippery chain. And then these quick links, they simply install by going through the holes of the chain, like so. So you simply push one through from the inside. Now these ones have a slight curvature to them, which means that uh, really you want the most curved part gonna be going around the sprockets and around the chain ring itself. So you wanna make sure that the actual pins of those chain links go through the center of those chain ends and then they will match up into the slots. Now at the moment it's not fully tensioned, but what we'll do is pull on the chain. Sometimes they don't actually uh, fully lock in until you apply a bit of torque there. So sometimes you have to just put a little bit of pressure through the pedals to do so. But once they're in, they are in and you are good to go riding again. There we are, the quick link fitted, ready to ride again, chain repaired at the side of the road. Let me know though what you think about this video. I reckon that a quick link is one of the most underrated bits of equipment that you could put inside of your saddlebag. Also, remember to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click that subscribe button, click that notification icon so you get alerted with a little ding dong each and every time we put a video live. Don't forget also, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got so much for everybody out there. And now for two more great maintenance videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here. Right, I'm off for a ride. Fixed it, get in.